Welcome to another edition of the Yuba Sutter Medical Explorer. My name is Dr. Robert Peppercorn and my specialty is dermatology. I serve as host of this program. The purpose of the Medical Explorer is to explore the medical communities of Yuba and Sutter counties and to take you behind the scenes of medical care practices in our local area. We have a very interesting program for you tonight as we explore the specialty of medicine that deals with diseases of the human heart. Of course, this is the field of cardiology. Our Channel 5 cameras will take us into the cardiology diagnostic laboratories of the Rideout Hospital, and we will meet with one of our area's most highly skilled cardiologists. It's a fascinating and very timely subject, and I hope that you will stay with us for the next half hour. Before getting to our topic tonight, let's take a look at the latest medical news. Have you been feeling headachey, numb around the nose, eyes, and mouth? Check your glasses. Not the lenses, but the size. A letter in a recent New England Journal of Medicine blames oversized glasses, particularly oversized sunglasses, for these symptoms. The problem was reported in three women, all of whom developed persistent numbness in the nose and mouth area after wearing large sunglasses for several hours every day. The symptoms cleared up after they stopped wearing the glasses. It's thought that oversized glasses compress a branch of the main nerve supplying the face. In my next medical news story, doctors dismiss a popular arthritis treatment. Arthritis sufferers unaided by drugs and desperate for relief from pain often turn to unconventional therapy. One developed in the 1970s was plasmapheresis, passing a patient's blood through a special machine to remove alleged disease-causing factors. Dozens of clinics opened offering the treatment to the nation's 10 to 15 million arthritis sufferers. But doctors report in a recent journal that the treatment doesn't work. Researchers in Canada gave the treatment to 26 patients with rheumatoid arthritis and alternated it with fake treatment. The patient's conditions were not significantly improved after either the real or the fake treatments, the investigators say. In my final news story tonight, University of Houston researchers suggest that a naturally occurring hormone in the human body combining with salt may be the cause of high blood pressure. The scientists stated that the hormone, called angiotensin II, triggered high blood pressure in tests with laboratory animals. Researchers note that the dogs used in the tests did not develop high blood pressure when high levels of either the hormone or salt alone were present. However, when the combination of both were high, then high blood pressure was present. Increased amounts of hormone angiotensin may also trigger the urge to eat more salt. My health tip for tonight concerns keeping healthy in hot weather. If hot weather makes you feel listless, drained of energy, and lazy, you're not alone. Doctors say that this can be a normal response to sudden exposures to high temperatures. The following are suggestions to keep cool when the temperature nears that 100 mark. Wear loose clothes, preferably of natural fabrics. Drink plenty of fluids, especially when you're active. Watch for early signs of heat stress or heat exhaustion, such as dizziness, chest pain, nausea, and a rapid heartbeat. Don't overexert yourself. It's normal to feel lethargic when the temperature creeps past 100 degrees. Rest and shield yourself from the sun when engaging in sports and other vigorous outdoor activities. Take salt tablets only after consulting with your doctor. Avoid hot foods, heavy meals, and alcohol. Take a cool bath or shower for quick relief. And finally, avoid stressful situations because tempers can fray easily in the heat. Now, on with the medical explorer. The subject of the human heart has intrigued us for decades. We've all repeatedly heard about heart transplants, artificial hearts, bypass heart surgery, and heart attack prevention as we watch television and read newspapers. Tonight, we're going to observe some of the modern diagnostic methods that are used to diagnose heart disease right here in Marysville and Yuba City. Let's head over to the Cardiovascular Diagnostic Laboratory of Rideout Hospital and explore some of these fascinating and extremely modern tools that doctors use to discover if a person has heart disease. We're standing in front of the Cardiovascular Laboratory of Rideout Hospital. And my guest today is Steve Rowell, Chief Cardiology Technician here at the hospital. Thank you for being with us today, Steve. Thank you. 
Could you tell us what goes on here at the cardiovascular laboratory? We do a variety of different non-invasive uh, test procedures uh, in the field of cardiology for the purpose of diagnosing heart disease. Uh, these include uh, treadmills, echocardiograms, and various uh, electrocardiographic analysis. And shall we go in? I'll show them to you. Great. Why don't we head in? Well, I see you have a patient all ready for us here. What's going on? We're going to do an exercise treadmill here on Mr. Baird here. Uh, this person was diagnosed as a congenital uh, heart problem at a younger age, and therefore at uh, intervals we do treadmills to uh, evaluate the person's uh, capacity to do exercise. Uh, we have started hooking up the electrodes here. I'm going to put a few more on. These are to monitor the electrocardiogram while we're having the person uh, do the exercise. So while the person is walking on the treadmill, you'll be able to follow exactly what's going on in his heart, basically, with the electricity in there. That is correct. We'll be able to monitor 12 different leads at, uh, simultaneously during exercise. People often wonder why all those wires are there, and I think that that purpose is so you can actually look at different parts of the heart, different angles of the heart, and see the electrical currents at that different position. That is correct. We look at a, a vector system of the, uh, of the electrocardiogram, looking at it from, from different angles. Ordinarily, we usually have older people getting this test. Isn't that correct, people with other heart problems? Yes, a number of our patients are older. Uh, the use of the treadmill in that case is usually to evaluate the presence of coronary artery disease or hardening of the arteries. Uh, this uh, is a, a good screening test for anybody with any uh, cardiac symptoms uh, such as chest pain, lightheadedness, uh, an inability to exercise uh, very thoroughly. It's also a good test for anybody that uh, has a family history or other cardiac risk factors such as smoking, uh, obesity, poor physical conditioning, diabetes, or any other uh, cardiac risk factor. I guess also people that might be considering beginning an exercise program might get a treadmill test. We do uh, exercise treadmills for that to give the person what we call an exercise prescription, giving them their upper limits of what they should not exceed. Uh, people can't just walk into the hospital and say, I want a treadmill test. They have to see their doctor first. That is correct. All treadmills are on a doctor's order. What type of doctors seem to order the most treadmill tests? Usually of uh, internists and uh, family practitioners. But any doctor on the staff here can order the test? Any doctor. Great. Well, even I could order it, but I don't think I'll be doing that much in dermatology. Okay. <laughs> well, why don't we get started and actually see you demonstrate it? All right. Well, you ready to get on it? Yes, I am. Okay. Start the treadmill. If you go ahead and step up on it, that's good. Now this treadmill is going to go in stages. Every uh, few minutes, the speed and the elevation will increase. What will we be watching here on the screen? We'll be watching for any abnormal beats. We'll be watching for any changes in the configuration of the beats, and we'll be looking at his heart rate. So we're actually seeing there what doctors call EKGs, electrocardiogram. That is correct. And that's showing what? That's actually the electrical activity? This, this is the electrical activity of the heart, yes. So how fast is he going right now? Right now he's going 1.7 miles per hour at a 10% grade. We'll increase the stages as we go and work a person all the way up to about 5 miles per hour and as high as a 16 or 18 percent grade. Just so of course, by, what you mean by grade is you're actually elevating how high he's walking, you're almost like walking uphill. That is correct. That's a fantastic little device there. I just noticed it just raised itself. Yes. The, uh, the average treadmill by this elevation only lasts anywhere from about 3 to 12 minutes. So when a person is told they're going to have a treadmill, it's really not something we're going to leave them on for a long time. It's a, a very quick exercise and, in fact, very seldom even breaks into a jog. It usually is just a brisk walk. Who else is usually in the room when you're doing the treadmill test? There's usually a cardiologist present for the test. And in case, well, I'm curious, what would happen if we had a man here in his 50s or 60s with a history of heart disease, and all of a sudden he'd get chest pain? What would you do? We would stop the test, examine the electrocardiogram, and if he required any medical uh, treatment, we do have all of our emergency facilities uh, here in the hospital. We also have an emergency cart. 
So this sort of test really needs to be done under supervision. This is a very closely supervised test. It's not the sort of thing you just want to walk into somebody's office off the street and just have them quickly do the test. It really has to be thought, and thought into very seriously. That is correct. How are you doing, Bob? Okay. Bob, how does it feel right now? It would uh, be very tiring if we keep it up for a long time. <laughs> You don't, you don't have any ill effects or anything? Oh, no, no. I, uh, I feel perfectly fine. Well, why don't we keep increasing it and see what happens? All right. How fast is he going right now? We're into the third stage now, which uh, is going to be 3.2 miles per hour and a 14% grade. How fast is his heart beating right now? Heart is going 148 beats per minute. Well, what's a normal heart rate for people? Normal heart rate is about 60 to 95 or 100. In exercise stress testing, we try to exceed that, and we try to get up to what we call an 85% of a person's maximum heart rate. And for Bob, that should be somewhere around 175 beats per minute. So the, how does one determine what your maximum heart rate is about? Simply by a graph using age. There's a formula that uh, the, heart, the maximum heart rate decreases with age. I see. So you just don't want to put excessive stress on it by getting the maximum, getting too close to that maximum. So you need to know what's the predicted maximum rate for each that, age group. That is correct. Okay. We're standing now in front of a machine which is called an echocardiogram. And I've heard of echocardiography, but I'm very, very curious, and I think you are, to find out exactly what it's used for. Steve, tell us, what is echocardiogram? Echocardiogram is a visualization of the heart using high-frequency sound waves. Uh, these sound waves are in the area of 3 million to 5 million uh, cycles per uh, second. And the information we get from this will uh, be the chamber sizes, the wall thicknesses, the valve motions. We'll actually be able to visualize the inside of the heart. As, as it's moving. As it's moving. It's a dynamic picture. We uh, apply a transducer uh, to the patient's chest, and the sound is transmitted into the chest, bounces off of the structures of the inside of the heart, and returns back through the transducer and through a, a system of... Uh, uh, software inside of the machine and is displayed uh, as the picture you see. There's no side effects from this test. Uh, the sound waves are not x-rays. There are no known side effects to the sound waves and there's, there's no radiation in them at all. This is a test we could safely do every day. We could do this on pregnant people and all kinds of things. We do it on pregnant people, yes. In fact, ultrasound or is used in pregnant women to actually see the size of the baby. Yes, yes. It's the same general idea. It is the exact same thing. A little bit different uh, uh, display, but the, the principle of the bouncing sound waves is all the same. Well, we see on the screen that something's moving there. I'd actually like you to point out exactly what we're looking at. We're looking at the heart right here. And the heart has a number of chambers. There's four chambers, and you can see one, two, three, four chambers. These chambers are separated by valves, and you can see one right here. This is the mitral valve, and you can see it swinging open and shut. It's just a very thin leaflet. The chambers are further separated by what we call septum, and this is the ventricular septum and the atrial septum. So we've divided the heart into four chambers. You can also see the contraction of the heart, and we can see the thickness of the different structures in the heart. Now, a disease we used to have a lot of was something called rheumatic fever, which would affect the valves of the heart, especially the mitral valve. Would you show us again the mitral valve? Yes, this is the mitral valve right here. And if this was a rheumatic heart, the leaflets, instead of being thin and uh, very pliable there, would be very thick and calcified, and their excursion would be just a fraction of what it is here. So we're really seeing a very healthy heart here. This is a healthy heart, yes. Would you be able to tell anything about a coronary artery disease, as we saw on the treadmill? Only indirectly on this test, because we're not able to visualize the coronary arteries outside of the heart. We could see the uh, changes due to ischemia or due to a previous infarction. And that would be that, especially in the case of an infarction, one of these walls would not be moving. You mean well. heart attack, right? After a heart attack, yes. Yeah. The walls would not move, and we can localize exactly where the heart attack was. I see. 
Now, when a doctor listens to a person's chest with a stethoscope, he often hears unusual sounds, which we call murmurs. Is that one of the reasons why a patient may come here for an echo? One of the main reasons we do echoes for, that is to evaluate the presence of heart murmurs. Heart murmurs usually come from abnormalities from within the valves. So by being able to look at the valves here, we're able to evaluate which valve is the problem, whether it's leaking, whether it's thickened. So before the decision might be made to perform surgery on a heart, to have a surgeon examine a valve and see if it needs to be replaced, this would be one test they might do? This would be one of the first tests they did, yes. And after this, what other testing might be done that you, we don't hear, have here at Rideout? What are some other things that we could do? For a, for a valve, valve problems, defect, mm -hmm. once the valve uh, problem was diagnosed here, if the doctor thought it needed further treatment, such as surgical intervention, the patient would probably go to Sacramento for a cardiac catheterization where they uh, put the tubes into the arteries and uh, shoot some dye into the heart, and they're able to visualize the uh, the heart. We'll be discussing that later on in our program. Okay. Uh, after that, the uh, decision would be made as to whether the person needed surgery or not. Steve, I really enjoyed this demonstration today. I have one more question for you. What does it, in, what does it entail to become a cardiology technician? What kind of training do you have to have? Most cardiology technicians uh, go to a uh, community college uh, similar to the two-year RM program or the respiratory programs. It's an associate degree in cardiopulmonary technology. Where, where are some of these offered? Uh, I went to one in San Diego, Grossmont College. There's another one in uh, the state of Washington and a few others back east. Is there anything in Sacramento? No. No, so really they have to find, they have to search out the specific program. There's only about six or seven schools in the United States. Well, your training certainly shows up well for you, and thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. The cardiology technicians at Rideout did a great job demonstrating their up-to-date methods and machines that help doctors diagnose heart disease. Let's meet now with one of our area's most highly trained physicians, Dr. Nicholas Kappus. Dr. Kappus' specialty is cardiology. He is a physician who is truly an expert on heart disease. Dr. Kappus, welcome to the Medical Explorer. Very good to be here. Thank you. Let's begin by having you tell us exactly what's meant by the term cardiology. 